So before uh, I hand over to Vineet, uh, a short introduction to Vineet and his background. So currently he's a founder of Ybyte, which is into uh, teaching coding to young children. Uh, he will speak more about Ybyte and his experience with uh, the first few batches of uh, students. So uh, before uh, starting uh, Ybyte, uh, he uh, has been mainly in uh, the, I mean, his primary expertise is in digital signal processing, SOC design, uh, ASIC design, and so on. Uh, but with uh, domain in the domain of wireless uh, telecom. So he worked for six plus years in Max Linear, where he involved himself in you know cellular access transceivers, cable TV tuners, uh, see, uh, microwave backhaul transceivers, and various other projects uh, at uh, Max Linear. Before Max Linear, he was a principal engineer at Broadcom, where he looked at the system design for LTE as well as uh, system design for a W. Uh, wireless LAN. And earlier to that, he was a senior staff engineer at Orca Radio Systems. So, uh, uh, in all these roles, you can see that his focus has been in uh, RF, uh, I mean, big B design, testing, validation, optimization uh, of signal processing algorithms. Before that, uh, I mean, he started his career in an institute of, uh, for Infocom Research in Singapore in 2000. And since after that, uh, he has been in all these uh, different uh, roles as uh, in system design roles. In terms of his education, he has uh, published a number of papers. Uh, three of his papers were published in IEEE publications. I remember reading one of his earlier uh, articles, uh, Cross Layer Design, a Survey and the Road Ahead. It was published in IEEE Comms Magazine in, uh, in 2005. And uh, as many of you are aware, uh, you know, it's very hard to publish a paper on such a prestigious uh, magazine. So yeah, Vineet has many publications like this uh, at a very uh, high level. Uh, he, is, uh, he has a master's degree from the National University of Singapore. So with that uh, brief introduction, I'll hand over to Vineet. Uh, thank you so much, Arvind, for that very kind introduction. Uh, can I be heard by everybody? Could you just please confirm that? Uh, yeah, I can hear you clear. Okay. Thank you so much, Arvind. Yeah. So thanks for the nice introduction. And thanks also to uh, Devopedia for organizing these talks. Uh, I have been attending many of these. And uh, you know, I hope this being the last talk, I hope I can live up to the level and the quality that has been set up. So with that introduction, you know, uh, today we'll talk about my experience or the Ybyte experience of teaching programming to young kids. Uh, we'll make this interactive. So if you have any question, you know, at any time, just please raise your hand, as Arvind said, and let's make it more uh, discussion interaction, because this is a topic which I think invokes interest. Uh, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people about this. It invokes interest. It invokes questions. And there are a lot of open, you know, uh, things to be still sorted out. Right. So everybody's contribution, especially people who are in the development community, I think can really make a difference. So, you know, let's just get started introducing myself. Well, I mean, let's just, you know, maybe give you an agenda for this uh, talk today. So we'll discuss the why by journey. What is the problem that we are trying to solve? Like I said, this topic invokes discussion. So I'll try to kind of identify what is the problem exactly that we are trying to solve, uh, how we have been doing, and what are the lessons that we have learned along the way. And finally, I will end this with my three pieces of advice. Now, this sounds rather, you know, let's say um, rather grand, but basically things that I've learned and, you know, interacting with students, with parents, which I think is decent advice for them to sort of follow. Right. And then we'll have a Q&A. But like I said, anytime if you have questions, please feel free to, you know, interrupt. So let's just look at the why by journey briefly. What is it that we're trying to solve? A picture speaks a thousand words. Uh, basically, we are providing coding lessons to young minds that inspire, engage, and build a solid foundation. This is me uh, recently in Noida. Uh, in, uh, there was an exhibition called STEM Confix from 26 to 28 August uh, last month. And I had set up a stall over there, right? So like it says, coding classes for young minds. Now, the question that might you know, be relevant here is, how did we really get started in this? Like Arvind said, I come from a Semiconductor background, you know, I've been building chips all my uh, career. In fact, even today I'm involved in those pursuits. 
but what is it that got us started with something which is related of course but also a little bit different from being let's say in a design house running simulations you know working with the uh, foundry people testing and so on and so forth so it's very different from that how did we get started and how did this whole you know story come to be so it's a very personal uh, connect that we have with this problem uh, my 10 year old daughter in 2019 2020 so this she is now 12 my elder daughter she used to routinely complain that computer science is a boring subject and her favorite let's say or her pet peeve should be used to be that she has to mug up a lot of things so we initially you know my wife and i we kind of investigated a little bit deeper into this and we realized that indeed they are being asked to mug up a lot of things which seem like a drain on their uh, interest their you know um, let's say um, uh, enthusiasm and so on and we used to wonder as parents uh, and both of us uh, you know happen to be uh, from the computer science background so we used to ask ourselves this question that how did we learn this the best and we basically realized that computer science is something that should be taught through projects because it's only when you do these projects that you really learn and and this this is where when we reflected back on our own learning this is what we found several parents that we spoke to in fact conquered uh, in our apartment in our neighborhood we spoke to parents and they all agreed uh, just an add on to this just yesterday okay my younger daughter who is now 8 years old she was too young then in 2019 20 she was complaining that she is having to mug up all these shortcuts in microsoft word and you know this control c control a and she asked me what's the use of all this and again the same question if and instead of asking kids to mug up all this i think if we make them do these things they will remember this better so you know with that sort of uh, thought process setting in our let's say our mind uh, we did a pilot project in march 2020 now this is a time and phase which all of us would remember as something um you know very different from what we are used to because this is also the time when as you know uh, covid-19 was kind of setting in india and there was a lockdown announced uh, so kids were at home and we decided to you know do this project a pilot project where we thought okay let's test our hypothesis that you know do kids really feel excited when we give them projects to learn and so the way it used to work is very informal we used to give them a what's you know a programming project in whatsapp in the morning and we used to search for a video link from youtube for them students would work on that project for the entire day remember this was the lockdown time so things were very uncertain but everybody was at home by evening students would submit their projects and we used to evaluate these projects create leaderboards and so on so this project i think we did this for like about 2 weeks and the projects typically would be like some activities games say quizzes etc on scratch because scratch is something students were learning in school um, in fact we did not know scratch too well by then but we had seen that it looks quite interesting and you know uh, so we started doing this now to our let's say uh, to some extent confirmation as well as a pleasant surprise this pilot project in fact changed the way we used to look at this entire situation first of all it definitely solidified our hypothesis that projects invoke interest so if i look at the lessons that we learned from this very clearly okay and this was like stark difference i mean students who were bored with computer science was so involved with this because projects got them thinking debugging discussing so you know again this was lockdown times people used to call each other on intercom hey you know what my project is doing this and this what is your project doing what are you doing so this got them thinking exploring ideas trying things which is what we wanted however we also realized that in the absence of a formal curriculum it gets a little bit hard because every student has a different you know uh, let's say you know background different level for example some were little bit younger so they wouldn't know what is you know what are say angles some are a little bit older so they could do more and so on and so forth so we realized that a formal curriculum was needed to make sure students move forward meaningfully otherwise it tends to get a little bit haphazard because videos that we picked from youtube not were not necessarily arranged in any let's say logical level of difficulty and we also found that when we created this leaderboard in the evening i mean we had to be a little bit careful here because you know you don't want to discourage anybody uh, you want to be encouraging everybody but at the same time you want to reward let's say the ones who have really done something exceptional so when we did this leaderboards you know it really encouraged students to go beyond the basics so we had students coming back saying oh, you know what i want to do a little bit more than this and and so on so basically what we found is that students 
once given projects, just like what, you know, when I look back at the way we learned, just like that, when we gave them projects, they got excited, they started moving forward, and there was a lot of, let's say, energy that we felt in them. So that's how we sort of started. And we basically started, you know, uh, kind of started just like that pretty much, right? So I put together a website. Uh, as you can see, we didn't even have a domain in then. This is like middle of May 2020. And we thought, why don't just expand this whole experiment, right? It started in my apartment. We knew all the people. It was very, very informal, just over WhatsApp. We thought, why don't we get some amount of structure to this, start putting together some classes and so on. So we started in May 2020. Uh, and then, you know, as they say, rest is history. Uh, we have made, I would say, decent progress. Obviously, a long way to go, still work in progress. But uh, we started with our beginners on Scratch. Then we moved on to Scratch intermediate level. Uh, last year, we started what we call the advanced level in Scratch. So now we have a, a, you know, this entire program is like 36 week structured program where students go through a very structured curriculum. Uh, you know, they uh, build projects and so on. And I'm happy to announce that in April of this year, we also introduced a Python course. Uh, we have had like 450 plus students from 20 odd countries. And in this process, and, and this is something I feel quite happy about, we have together, okay, together built more than 5,000 projects and, and of, obviously of different complexities. And each of these projects has been carefully evaluated, right? So, you know, we had this website, whybyte.in. Uh, we have class notes, videos, activities for a structured curriculum. We have done master classes, hackathon. In fact, Arvind was kind enough to be a judge on a, one of our hackathons. Now, the key point is that even today, uh, we have moved forward quite a bit. We have learned a lot of lessons through this. Even today, our entire methodology is based on students doing their projects independently. And this part is important. We give students work that they must work on independently, trying out their ideas, making mistakes, debugging, and learning from each other. So that part has not changed. And that is the exact problem we are trying to solve, that computer science, the way it's being taught. I just feel there's a lot of improvement there. And that's what we are trying to do. Right, so I'll you know uh, pause here for a moment. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take that. Maybe I can just hold on to the slide. Uh, uh, otherwise, we'll move forward to the challenges and lessons that we have learned. Right? But yeah, anybody, any question, I'll be more than happy to answer that. How did you spread the word? I see twenty plus countries, uh, so it's a very yeah wide spread. Yeah. So uh, first, initially, it was through our own network. And now it's, uh, we also use Facebook advertisements a little bit, Google ads, but the most effective method has been word of mouth. So a lot of students that are now coming in are, you know, from our networks, networks, network, something like that. So largely word of mouth. Okay, so social media is not that effective. Um, yeah, lately it's been that way. It was quite effective in the beginning, but I think it's been overloaded is what I feel. <laughs> okay. Okay, got it. I mean, unless you've probably spent a lot of money, which we don't have, obviously, right? So, yeah. word of mouth seems more more effective. Okay. I agree. I hi, Vinit. Uh, Prem Hello. here. Uh, Hello, Prem. Yeah. Hi, uh, Vinit. Uh, what has been like? Uh, you know, what 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 age groups you've been uh, doing this for? For scratch. Okay. Yeah. So we take at a minimum age of eight. Okay. As and of course on the higher side we have had adults join this course. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. yeah, yeah. So, one of the that, things, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, adult students, or um, you know, yeah, what, adult uh, students. Uh, I mean, okay. like uh, people who wanted to become teachers, they have come and joined this course, and they have become teachers, in fact. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, so the thing is that this is the group class, uh, mm -hmm. and it's very discreet, right? So, anybody can join, and right. We treat everybody the, uh, the same. So everybody has to do those projects, uh, you know, yeah. and uh, there's a bit of independent work required. So we don't take very young students, minimum 80 years of age. And okay. in fact, if you look at Scratch, they also recommend 8 plus. So we just aligns that way. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's very pedagogically designed, the, uh, the MIT Media Lab. So uh, yeah, it's one of the best platforms to, to I think so. children and coding. Yeah. yeah. Sure. sure. You mentioned 5,000 projects. Yeah. So what are, how, what is that, you know, how do you get so many projects? Yeah, yeah. So so what happens, for example, we have, uh, let's say we just started the beginner's batch. So that will be a 12-week program in which there are eight mandatory projects plus one optional project. So let's say every student will do at least eight projects. Now, if you have, let's say, 10 students in a batch, that's already 80 projects. 
So if you have like 450 plus students, each of them has done on average 10 student projects, right? So that's how we get to 5,000. It's just- so, you know, But are they, are they same projects uh, oh, repeated no, for each batch? No, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. So for example, beginners projects, it's all in the website. So beginners, we have, for example, eight projects, but what happens in our projects is that we only give them a template so they can build on top of that. So they're not repeated so much. They, you know, there are lots of own ideas that are put in. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. We'll actually talk about that actually. Okay, so maybe we'll move forward. So let's see what are the challenges and lessons that we have learned. I mean, it took me some time to sort of organize this data. Uh, so I classified them into three categories. Uh, one related to the curriculum design, two related to students, and three, the general ecosystem of, let's say, programming kids and so on and so forth. I'll talk about each of them separately, but the one observation that I want to make up front is that Kids learning programming is a totally different ball game compared to adults learning programming because the motivations, the approach, the expectations, everything are totally different. So, you know, many times we, in fact, this is something I myself realized, we just take it for granted that, you know, if an adult is learning, it's basically a scaled down version is a kid learning. But in fact, that's not true, right? So that's with that, for, you know, let's say sort of background set. Let's look at all these three in you know one by one, right? So let's look at the curriculum design. Now, what I've realized is that <laughs> deciding a direction for curriculum, I think is extremely tough. I mean, I, I wouldn't I, I had the word tough here, but I've added education this this very because there are just so many paths to move forward, right? So we started in scratch, to be honest, without thinking much because it just looked right and they were being taught in school, it just looked right and uh, we have, you know, uh, sticking to we have been sticking to that. But I realized that there are so many ways to go about it. There are so many other approaches people follow. For example, there are some programs which take you to robotics to start with. I mean, they teach you a little bit of programming. They get into robotics. Then there are some others who get into say web design, right? Um, there are some, uh, you know, other programs which directly get you into say Python, and they in fact very vehemently argue that Scratch and stuff should not be done. There's like all kinds of varieties. I think the broad theme that comes out is that while it is, you know, um, it's quite tough in a way, but I think the theme that kind of comes out is that it's important to have an outcome for the children to relate to, right? So, you know, so sometimes people give that outcome through robotics, sometimes through a website and so on. But the point is there are many, many parts. And what I have done, uh, I actually I published this video last year sometime. I kind of, you know, took, a, let's say, a bird's eye view of this whole landscape and I just looked at all the different things that are being offered and sort of classified this into two main categories which is a block coding text based coding and then six application areas so they could be app development web development game development 3d animations robotics microcontrollers and nowadays a lot of talk about AIML we'll talk about this a little bit later but the approach we are taking Right. I mean, again, there are variations to this approach, but the approach we are taking is that we are getting students solid in, let's say, these two modes. So we start with Scratch, then we get them into Python. But the whole idea is that we are basically focusing on what we call the fundamentals of, you know, uh, logic and computational thinking and getting them to learn by doing. So in Scratch, for example, and that was the question I guess just asked that students, for example, every student who comes in at the beginners level will do 27 projects and i'll show you what these projects are some of them at least nine quizzes so you know every after every four projects they have a quiz they have some kind of showcase you know so we have a structure there before we take them into python and and this has been quite deliberate decision you know uh, we get a lot of uh, we have to explain this many times to parents because a lot of parents ask us to move the, their kids directly to python but you know we have taken this approach because we think that Scratch could be a very good platform to build fundamentals of logic and computational thinking. And at the core, our program is all about learning by doing, because we believe that's the best way to learn programming. Now, here I want to bring out, you know, uh, what I think, this is our view. I mean, when I say I, it's like why by, you know, so uh, Nidhi and I work together. Uh, what we think is the, way a curriculum should be right so one it should encourage experimentation two it should create a reasonable balance between effort and outcomes like i said it could happen through robotics it could happen through you know maybe very other things but there should be a reasonable balance 
and this word is actually very important because increasingly there are tools where with very little effort you can get a lot of outcome you click one button you know and you get let's say an entire platform are made i mean there are tools of that sort and they are meant for a different audience i mean they are meant maybe for a game developer who's professionally developing games but you will find that they are being touted as you know some kind of great tools which kids should learn but i tend to differ because i think there has to be an effort for seeing a certain outcome and students should make a causal connection between what they are doing and what is the outcome seen now it could be uh, you know for example in this code actually there's a small bug in this i picked this up because this was a student's message to me uh, this is supposed to be a for loop and she has forgotten to you know change this counter by one so that's a mistake in this but the fact is that this little thing has an outcome on the screen which the student must then correlate and say okay i know why this work or why this does not work and i think both are important and we believe that scratch provides an amazing sweet spot because it is you know it kind of limits the effort to an extent but not too much because you still have these basic blocks which you must put together to do anything substantial at the same time the outcome is seen right away and the causality can be made very strong right now one thing i want to highlight here is that at this age okay when we are looking at let's say a 8 or 10 year old the causality that i am looking for is only between the code that is written here and what's happening on the screen so i am not really not expecting that child to understand that there is a hardware behind this understand that there are memory allocations going on and and so on and so forth all that is i'm deferring for the moment not to say that's not important but i think so long as the child forms a connection between what's happening on the screen to what he's code he or she's coding i think that goal is quite decent uh, again i can you know if there's any question i'll be very happy to take but that's how we have chosen scratch um and like i said that you know a 8 or 10 year old i have realized is actually very very tender i mean their world view is so tender that Uh, in in fact we learned this the hard way too i mean we used to start our classes with a bang because we thought that's the right way to go uh, because you know we just tend to assume things okay everybody would know variables everybody would know you know um, for example what x and y coordinates are but over time we have realized that their view is very very tender and everything needs to be built very gently right so in fact what i have also realized is that analogies help to create a visual visualization so one of the i mean some analogies that we use i use a lot of them actually Uh, for example a sprite which is the sort of central character of a of the scratch program we call it an obedient friend now to me this looked like an obvious thing in fact more and more i teach programming i keep telling students to remember the fact that it's obedient because this is something if you think about it every computer program is fundamentally obedient it will no matter if you have a bug in that it'll do that bug but it wants you to do the thinking interestingly a student came up to me once and told me that sir you know when i was first taught programming i was told that sprite is a servant but you have called it a friend and that has made me change the way i look at sprite and i felt that was a very beautiful comment to me because you know it at that age these things matter right so that like i said the world view is very very tender right so you have to be very gentle with them explain everything for example variables we explain them as boxes with labels and this is the exact analogy i provide them you walk into your mom's kitchen and you will see that she has arranged things nicely imagine what will happen if inside the tea box you go and put sugar right and it's going to be all chaos uh similarly we introduce lists by interconnected boxes which can each be accessed by themselves so the point is you have to create these analogies you have to create these you know uh, visualizations for them but that doesn't mean that things have to remain childish forever with these things built in you can really push the envelope on logic like we do uh, and i'll i'll show you later uh the other problem that we face which is what i call the mathematics hurdle most youngsters okay and and this is also something we have learned a little bit of a hard way most youngsters have very scant knowledge of mathematical concepts like x and y coordinates and angles uh, angles of course you know people learn maybe in the secondary school i don't know sometime uh, but what we have realized is that we have to you know if you are doing a two dimensional project right i mean very soon you will realize that x and y coordinates are almost like a given right i mean when we do a tic tac toe all of us will say tic tac toe is a very simple program but you think about it from an 8 years point of view who doesn't know what is x and y who doesn't know how to think of a two dimensional list it's not all that simple after all right similarly angles so we have to bring in these things in just the right quantity at the right time and again we have built this in our curriculum but even today 
I hear that one of the most difficult concepts for students turns out to be this X and Y. But the way I see it, and I recently wrote about this in LinkedIn as well, that you know, the exposure that these kids are getting through Scratch, which is visual, I think is going to take them a long way through in their mathematics as well. But nonetheless, mathematics is important. Now, talking of all this between you know outcome, effort, and so on and so forth, I have seen a very interesting phenomenon, and this is again a real back by real people behind this. I have seen a lot of times people, let's say when we are teaching them, it's kind of, you know, one of the ways to create interest is to show some really glamorous outcome. You know, that somebody made this chatbot, which can tell you which movie from Shah Rukh Khan's, let's say, list was a super hit because of so-and-so name and so on. I mean, there are like tons of things being done, which, which are great. Okay. I'm not looking down on any of those. It's great if students can do those kind of things. But what I also realize is that at that age, excitement comes down faster than it goes up. So you may get kids excited, but if you do not bring a solid mental model to them, if you do not tell them why things happen, why they are happening or why they are not happening, then I think very soon they keep asking you what is next. And again, this is, you know, I, I've come across many students who have come to us saying that, you know, I'm able to do a lot of things, but I don't feel really feel interested in this because, you know, after a while, it just starts feeling quite drab to me. So I think the novelty also wears off quite fast. So basically, in short, the approach we have taken. Uh, again, you know, this is uh, obviously work in progress. I'm sure this can be improved, and this is where I hope I get suggestions as well. We have created an activity-based curriculum that takes students through different activities. So these are the projects that I was mentioning, and very importantly, and this part is something that's extremely important. I think is to keep increasing the difficulty level. Now, this is intentional because I think at that age, a student you know, will make a, a conclusion very fast, right? That, oh, I already know this, or I do not know this. So if there is something, you know, if, if you can, at least my experience has been, if I can develop this trust in the student that, you know, when I come to this class, there'll be something new for me, right? Maybe the project is a little bit harder. Maybe it's some new concept. Every class, there is something new. Uh, I think that works wonders in creating interest. I mean, it has its flip, side, flip sides too. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's what we have done. Uh, so, you know, question is how do we select these activities? In fact, this is probably the most hardest task for me, apart from, of course, you know, teaching. And teaching is fun because it's also interactive, but this is a solitary, you know, uh, like a, let's say, activity where you keep looking at different kind of projects thinking about it is the activity engaging is this even doable by students i mean are we using concepts which are just way too much for them right uh, and of course when i say doable it has to be doable within a given time right i mean we can't have a student doing like 10 hours of this and because it'll disturb his entire uh, routine right so you know does it illustrate the right kind of concept can this be extended so remember i told you that every activity we give there is a scope to expand because we want students to explore but what are those ideas, right? So we try to identify for those students. Um, and does it fit in a logical sequence? Now, this is an iterative process. This is what has taken us, you know, so right now we have like, I think around 20, so around 32, 33 activities, 24 in Scratch, eight or nine in Python and counting. But this is like something I, you know, I, I obviously I enjoy this, but also find it very, very, very challenging because this whole thing has to, all these considerations have to be met. It's also iterative because it, it has happened in the past that we have introduced an activity and realized that we got it too hard for them. And maybe we hadn't built the basis enough for them, right? So we have had to shuffle these activities around based on student feedback. Now, one good thing is our model, we get feedback almost instantly because the way it works is that after the class, I leave my students alone to do the project. And from their response, I know, did this click or was it a little bit too abstract? Maybe the storyline did not click with them. Maybe the concept was just too hard. It has to be moved out and so on. So it's almost like within a week, I'll know what has happened because when 15 students or 20 students do this activity, you will know exactly where things were hard and what exactly happened. So just give you a bit of example of some of the activities. Like I said, there are 32, but you know, for example, we introduced this X and Y coordinates using the draw activity. Now this is the second activity they do because X, Y is very fundamental. We bring it up in the beginning, though this, tends to trouble students till quite a long time. I've noticed that. Somewhere middle way through the program, we built this brick breaker game. So I have to bring in the concept of angles. So by this time, they have already done like, I think 12 or 13 projects. Um, 
And here we introduce for the first time a nested repeat loop. Now, this is something again we would take for granted as adult programmers that what's the big deal? I put a four inside a four. But for a student of that age, we have to really build this. And again, scratch helps because what I do is that I build, for example, one row of bricks, extend the code to build, let's say, five rows of bricks, and so on and so forth. And once they get a hang of it, they start experimenting. Somebody put a triangular array, somebody will put, let's say, you know, uh, like a lower triangular and so on and so forth. The last project we do in Scratch, and, and notice the complexity we are looking at now. We have started from these kids who are being told that variables are like, you know, boxes in your kitchen, uh, to this game of Hangman, which students actually like, but it's quite tough. But this is the last project on Scratch uh, platform. So basically, here we have lists. I mean, obviously, we have list of words, chosen word, and so on and so forth. We have strings. Uh, and many of these students don't yet have an idea of these data types. I reason I do this is because I want to take them to Python. And the first thing I want to introduce that, hey, look, variables are still labels with boxes, boxes with labels, sorry. But now it matters what's inside that box. And that's why data types are important. And we have already introduced them over here. And we get them to do this for loop, which is, for some reason, it's not present natively in Scratch. But that's actually great. Because when we do introduce for loop in Python, uh, we can give a compare and contrast. And in Python, one of the most popular activities for us has been this shopping cart, which is, uh, you know, it's become quite popular because, uh, you know, I see a lot of people looking at it, even from outside, uh, you know, our curriculum. Uh, ideas should teach them list manipulation. So what we have realized is that teaching them, for example, you know, look, if you have a list, how do you add elements to it? If you have a list, how do you delete elements from it? How do you change the value of a variable? That is all quite drab. But if you can create an activity, see, right, for example, build a shopping cart obviously we guide them then that gives them a direction that gets them thinking and students routinely create their own variations so for example we had students in this uh, somebody says okay he gives you a choice of a currency should i do indian rupees or us dollars if you do us dollars i'll give you a discount somebody built this feature that okay since you bought five things your order will be delayed since you bought you know more than twenty five thousand rupees i'll give you uh, a discount and so on and so forth in fact this is what we do and yeah, I, tell, I think I'll pause here for a moment uh, before I move to the students really doing. So just to summarize, basically we have an activity to win program. We give students a lot of freedom in what they do uh, because basically they can go and read on their own and, and, and you know implement ideas. Also, we have class notes, class videos, as well as sample projects for all of this openly available on our, web, on our website. So I have students you know, from all over the world who are accessing this. Sometimes they reach out to us as well, and that's perfectly fine because that's something, you know, uh, let's say take the Devopedia spirit or something I've learned from Arvind that openness, collaboration, I think something is has to be built into the curriculum in general. Right? Yeah. So with that, I think I'll take a pause. It's been saying a lot of things. We'll be happy to answer questions. Um, yeah. Hi, hi, Vinay. Yeah, hi. Hi, um, just a comment actually. Um, I, I really enjoy the uh, the talk you're giving. And I think actually it's a, it's a really uh, great approach you're taking as well, because at least with, with this approach, you're not scaring the, the children off and you're, um, as you say, sort of extending their understanding and uh, abilities as you go. And I think it also highlights, um, you know, highlights that you don't necessarily need a, a, a computer science degree in order to to code, uh, that it is something that you can sort of acquire through uh, project-based learning. Yeah, that's an interesting point, in fact, right? So um, one of the things that parents ask me routinely is that they themselves may or may not be programmers. And is it important for them to be programmers? And my answer is always, and you know, it always helps if a parent can be, is can understand this, but it's not necessary. Because, you know, there are two parts to all these activities, especially at that age. For example, this, like, let's look at this brick breaker game, right? This is what I built in the class. But if you look at what the students do, right, they'll put some, you know, hidden bricks in there and so on and so forth. So that's where the imagination part comes in. And I think anybody, no matter what background you are in, especially if you, I would say, come from a different background, you can give these imaginative ideas. And so to your point that you don't need a computer science degree, you, you know, you just need to go and get your hands dirty. Things will fall in for you. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Have your have your opinion on something? Prem, you again? Can I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to know, uh, like, uh, while I'm not against Scratch, I have uh, looked into it uh, uh, quite a bit. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, the thing is uh, scratch acts like a, it's more like a uh, like a crutch for mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know a walking stick for the for the young people to learn coding at uh, some point they need to drop it uh, there has to be you know uh, there, there has to be a more independent uh, uh, they they'll have to become more independent do you think uh, you know when do you think that that point would come and when that comes wouldn't uh, uh, this visual uh, approach uh, that uh, the block approach that uh, scratch provides wouldn't that be kind of a uh, be an impediment for for them to think freely in uh, in terms of you know to independently look at the text based programs like sure. uh, python or c so that's a good question and that's the question we grapple with i mean we uh, yeah. in fact we recommend our students to finish our advanced level before we take them to python and basically advanced level they are building games like hangman tux of math snake and so on so fairly logic intensive yeah. uh, but still visual right now what i find right uh, yeah. after that we take them to python and the first thing obviously is that there's no sprite right so sprite is their mm -hmm. obedient friend that's missing so you know so that takes a little bit of uh, getting used to second thing that unlike these blocks which you could just you know which are there in front of you now you have to remember a lot of commands you probably have to go and refer to this but one of the things we have done and you can look at our class notes from the website is that when i go into python i have this thing called compare and contrast so for example yeah. a while loop in python is almost same as a repeat until in scratch right so i think to exactly. your question you know we can do a fair amount of things in scratch but there'll come a point where you'll realize that you know with all these lists and so on so forth the project will get quite hard to debug at which point i think definitely move to something like python because you have more better tools available there you know yeah. and but still i think that connect back to scratch like you know this double loop whenever we introduce uh, in fact we do a project in our python course which is called a pixel art so using yeah. turtle they built a pixel art like a mario or something like that right and yeah. you know so again it's basically the same project and i think the point is that if they can make a connection back to something that they are very familiar with then not right. naturally they'll proceed forward in in their own paths right so I, I don't think it has to be like a very strict that you have to drop it i think it will yeah. be natural is what i feel progression into the world of uh, let's say text based programming all right okay yeah that's one area where while i i am a big admirer and i do from in fact my nephew was just practicing uh, okay scratch on raspberry pi next to me uh, he oh. just left and uh, i have been a big fan of scratch but uh, you know there are a few areas where i am a bit concerned Sure. That's one reason I did not take this up for teaching. So okay. uh, maybe some yeah. discussions and some in, insights. We can do that. Can, yeah. yeah. So we can also have a separate on, offline discussion. You know where. Sure. Yeah. This will be interesting yeah. to me. For sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. So let's move forward. Related to students. Okay. Now the first thing is, and I think this goes beyond saying that students need a lot of hand holding. So you know, while our methodology is. I think the outcome, learning outcome, is quite phenomenal because they are really learning by doing. We are letting them alone, but they invariably make mistakes when they try out their projects. And you know, the interesting bit is that many a times these mistakes are not glamorous, right? They are just like, for example, this one. I mean, again, I just picked up these examples. I think I would have some 500 of such messages in my WhatsApp because I give them my number. They are free to reach me anytime. Look at this. Basically, this student has set donut points as variable to zero, and I think her complaint was that you know my score is not changing when I'm doing all this, right? Because this variable is set to zero. Now, this is such an interesting and such a nice telling example because many a times the mistakes we also make in programming are not very glamorous. They're not related to the fact that you know you did not know the concept or something like that. It's just because some variable not being set and so on. But they discover this a lot. Of course, there are other mistakes like this particular student. I couldn't find the exact, you know, uh, message that he had sent me, but he had basically created an infinite loop, and he called me saying that my program is running forever; it's not stopping. The mistake he had made, and again, the previous point, Scratch is very forgiving for like Scratch. Basically, small p is same as big p. So he had written some while loop where uh, he had missed the small case letter or something like that, right? And uh, but he's one of my best students actually. He's a very enterprising, very you know. Let's say hardworking, but the point is like you know, you get this message this is giving me error. I don't know why. And my approach to these students always is that I never tell them the answer. I just tell them, okay, look at this part. Do you think something could be wrong? And then of course, like for example, this code fairly long code is from Tux of Math. So this student had been working with me like that particular day. So it still doesn't work because again there was some mistake or maybe something else was wrong, right? So the point is that when we are running this activity-based program to 
for it to be successful it requires a lot of hand holding and teachers have to be available for students in fact sometimes we joke that i'm running a call center because just before the uh, you know project submission deadline i get like tons of messages this is not working that is not working and because these kids are trying their own ideas so it's interesting to debug sometimes right the other thing that i see very interesting students and this is to do with i think the way you know our minds work i think some of as we grow older we somehow get a bit more systematic maybe life teaches us or i don't know what happens but youngsters are like you know they see oh look you know brick breaker i am going to put let's say 15 different colors of bricks three different kind of balls and you know five different ways of scoring and the code all of that so that i call bonus before basic i call it i keep telling my students don't do that basic comes bonus comes after basic but students routinely do this they tend to put too many things and then you know they say ah oh, i don't know what's going on right and sometimes they be like literally crying sir i don't know what happened my laptop is you know going bonkers and so on and so forth but what i've realized is that again activity based thing helps in a way because slowly over time they themselves start realizing that they are just going too fast for their own good but still in general i think step by step development is something that has to be actively inculcated and the way i tell them is well, remember bonus comes after basic but this is something you know kind of it you know yesterday there was a talk very interesting talk about top down and bottom up uh, you know very interesting point like you know how do you develop a certain piece of code but students tend to be quite haphazard especially the young age right so that's something now every child is different now here i do not and i very consciously make a point that i'm not talking of capability here right because they are very young they are all you know let's say kind of tender right but in terms of their response to this activity based uh, learning right uh, one some of them are extremely exploratory right they'll just go and you know like a free play given to them they'll go and explore and like i said our material is all open they'll go and look at what's happening in the last advanced project and they'll want to do it today they'll do it also some are extremely artistic so some students they'll not want to explore too much in the logic side but their sprites their you know the way the whole project is done will be so beautiful that you just look at it and you'll be like wow right some on the other hand will get frustrated easily some will fight on so what will happen because we are leaving them alone difficulty level is increasing so as a teacher i have to be really cognizant of the students let's say uh, mental conditioning right and and this is absolutely nothing to do with the capability i think they are all capable in their own ways but each child is different right some get frustrated when things don't work some are like okay up to the challenge there are some of my students complete fighters i mean nothing is working but they'll get it working look at the video look at this send me message 25 30 times but they'll get it working there are some others everything will working last one thing doesn't work we all over the place sir my code nothing works and will be very disappointed so you have to be i think as a teacher you have to be cognizant of these differences and make sure that each one i mean nobody is sort of going down the path right they are all being encouraged in a, in a nice way right and that brings me to the point that the teacher i think still plays a very very important role and this is based on having interacted with lots and lots of students from different cultures uh, you know i think teacher is very important students are different uh, but teachers own commitment and sincerity i think has a significant influence right so my students i i don't think all of them expect me to know all the answers or expect me to give them answer right away because i mostly don't give them at the same time they realize that i'm not giving them not because i'm not sincere it's because i trust that they'll figure it out themselves and of course depending on the student some students i do give an answer because i know this student will get frustrated if i do not give this answer now anymore so you know that judgment student has to teacher has to make and still i think teacher plays a very important role right uh, but and this again i have learned by experience um, and i you know i see my own kids uh, in this level students want guidance but also their space and and i think this part is very important i i bring this up specifically because i think the biggest disfavor a teacher can do with their students at a young age particularly is to not leave them alone and the reason i bring this up is because somehow i and i have spoken to a lot of teachers you know as we Uh, you know since i'm running this a lot of teachers we sort of formally or informally interview i realized that in many programs the time for the class is bounded and during that time the answer has to be given so student is really not being left alone to sort of struggle with the problem right now like i said you have to be cognizant that not every student is going to take to it in a very joyful manner but chances are that if you leave a student alone first of all he or she will realize that there is a problem which itself is a big thing number 2 they'll come up with creative solutions or they'll reach out to you in a much more you know uh, 
let's say a uh, focused manner right so i think the biggest disclaimer we can do is to not leave them alone and this is something that i'm more and more sure in fact nowadays my students those who know me uh, they tell me something is not working uh, i you know many times they even tell me so please don't tell me because i want to figure this out myself and i say okay you are most welcome to do so obviously i feel happy with that right so you know this is sort of related to students i think that every student is different teacher has to be cognizant and teacher i think plays a very very important role yeah i mean we are talking a lot of technology replacing teachers or many teachers you know or a teacher let's say being treated as like almost a commodity i don't think that's going to work in this space because though i'm sitting with here in my room i have students from all around the world but i feel a connection with each of my students and i think many of them do vice versa again i'll pause here for a moment before we go to the general ecosystem and Okay. Uh, very positive yeah. you know from what you just said uh, mm -hmm. uh, you just said you know the children will say you know don't tell me this sir, so i want to figure it out mm -hmm. so i just recall the pleasure of uh, finding things out by richard feynman uh, that's such a splendid uh, work if uh, if you haven't read that so i recommend this book to all sure uh, a, yeah uh, you know feynman was one of the the nobel laureate and one of yes. the finest physicists and i think so uh, that, that's that that's a very insightful uh, point that you have made and thank you sure yeah this is direct experience i think all right so, so how much of mm -hmm, please how much of parents involvement required have you observed any dropouts uh, so yes there are some dropouts uh, for dro dropouts happen for multiple reasons we'll talk about that also uh, see the way i see it if the parents are involved if they know coding it always helps but that's the same as saying that you know if the parent learns music uh, kids will also learn music or parents learn art kids will also learn art almost the same yeah as far as our program goes so i tell everybody hey, look if you have any problem what server there's a video there's a notes you just reach out to us and we'll always guide you right so from that point of view there are students whose parents absolutely do not have background in coding in fact we have had students uh, we also have a partnership with an ngo so some students come from them in fact they come from the lower strata of the society right and we do it they they come without any charges and so on uh, amazingly they did really well in this right because again you know at the end of the day these platforms are quite well designed they are intuitive and you know if the lesson is clear enough of course what we did was to assign a student mentor for them to just sort of help them out i i hope that answered your question yes but uh, minimum they should have a computer right oh yeah a laptop is needed so if they so i have an introductory class right so if they, i tell them if you can attend this class it means you have internet you have a laptop you are good to go okay maybe i should ask this question last but you know how do you differentiate with uh, white hat junior or other educational yeah we'll talk about that later maybe okay yeah or maybe i can just say i mean it's just the you know the interest that our students are generating uh, you know without mentioning any specific pair i think the way we are doing this the the energy the passion with which we are involved with every student right i think that's the main difference the con quality of the content the uh, the the way of delivery so i'm teaching myself uh, you know plus the kind of activities they are doing right i guess that's what differentiates apart from many other marketing related factors let's say yeah. okay mm -hmm. okay so let's move on to the general ecosystem now this is again something which i find very very interesting i have got a youtube channel where we have lots of videos you know some of those videos i'm extremely happy about because i think they are illustrating a nice programming concept but guess what the most popular video on my channel and you know is this 3 minute video which talks about something called an orange share button on scratch right now to an adult right i mean especially in this time of covid having remotely worked i think this is like a 2 minute job right but it turns out that it looks to me that this video which has got 6000 views so far 139 hours it's been viewed it's only 3 minutes and even that day when i made this talk which is i think recently i had got 18 views in last 48 hours right so this is the most popular video on my channel and this is just sim this is a symptom let's say example of what i'm trying to say that in a general population right installation of any type i think is extremely difficult right so you know this i think is one of the simplest installations one could think of but the fact that it generates so much interest in a general crowd now this video is open it's not just to my students 
YouTube is publicizing it, and so many people keep watching it, right? Like, look at this: eighty-nine percent of this have come from YouTube search, right? So I think installation is very hard, and from that point of view, I would say cloud-based tools are a real blessing because I don't, I can get away from installation, be it Scratch, be it Python, be it on Replit. It just, or we were considering at one point we were looking at Colab. I actually, spoke to Arvind and took his advice as well. Uh, we went to Replit, but this is a real blessing, right? and I think this. is quite pertinent i was just talking to somebody uh, just like two days back they run a robotics firm and they conquered that when you run a robotics program it becomes even more difficult because you have all these moving parts you have these motors you know you have these let's say uh, leds and so on and so forth right so i think this is something i've learned uh, overload of terms and platforms is super super confusing i mean i was like i said recently at noida talked to a lot of people and even otherwise i get a lot of calls from people you know i realize that people are just so confused about what is scratch what is javascript what is java you know and to some extent you know ironically i think some companies are using that to their favor because you know there are things which are so blatantly strange but they are being put out as marketing literature right that you know or even programs being sold in that way so i think this is one thing i mean i, I do try to so i made a video on this like i said right? i do try to simplify things for people but this is something i think industry has to still explain because it's just you know little bit confusing for a common person to understand what is all this and where does this go in if i look from the kids point of view and i say this also as a parent like i said i have two daughters in a similar age group one both of them have by the way done parts of our course uh kids are involved in way too many activities these i mean there's music there's sports there's art I mean, look at an average kid in bangalore or any other city around the world you will find that kids are like very very busy and it looks to me that schools the regular schools have come back with a vengeance after covid so i think two years they were a bit subdued because you know all this online schooling and now they have come back full fledged there are like so many homeworks so many assignments what it means from all of us i mean we cannot you know obviously it's a parents call it's a child's call but i think what we as educators need to be cognizant of or to you know be real, to realize is that we need to uh, you know empathize with this fact so i think we need to be a little bit more flexible and we are also learning this in in our own ways you know uh, in our batches so we are giving students more chances let's say and uh, you know accommodating them a bit more than earlier also i think an important point is that as educators and this is running into the face of some of the aggressive marketing that this topic attracted is that we have to emphasize that this is a journey not a race i mean people ask me you know should what will happen if my kid is he's already 11 and you know he doesn't know how to code in python i was like relax he's only 11 i mean come on he's got a long you know way ahead of him so there's not a race here it's just it's a journey right you're growing with it and then we have this major perception challenge which i think is i feel very sad about you know we actually Um, uh, kind of talked about this also that many people in the common population right and i'm saying this there are people who hardly have a background in programming or or even otherwise they seem to harbor a kind of disdain for scratch as something just childish i mean this you know one of the things that i see in any tool that is easy to get started with tends to get underused that's my general experience but i feel that when it comes to kids now remember we are talking of 8 to 10 year olds who have got a very very tender mental model i think you can do really amazing stuff with uh, you know uh, scratch and in fact as we have shown you can do games like hangman you know tux of math which are fairly complex stuff at that age right so interestingly when i was doing my research for this talk i found this one article which says exactly the same thing that i was trying to say but this is a real issue and unfortunately i think this has also been propagated Uh, by some you know let's say uh, some i would say careless comments where we say oh scratch uh, why you were in scratch right but i think what we are missing is the basic fact that an adult doing programming is different from a pro- child doing programming so for a child i still believe yes uh, you know like we just discussed there are points when scratch will appear to be insufficient but to get started to go to a fairly long distance in understanding basics of logic what is a for loop what is a while loop why do we use it and so on and so forth scratch i think is phenomenal and i hope this perception changes i am trying my best anyway right and then i think there is this what i call the so what challenge now you know people understandably right if they are investing time and money into something right especially time because time i think for kids is very very valuable understandably they ask this question okay so what i mean what is my child going to get after all this and you know i 
it's sometimes hard to explain sometimes i also feel coding is being targeted a little bit too harshly because a little bit new also and it's also to do with our own you know let's say the hyperbolic marketing that went around some time back right so people it's a valid question but i think the way i see it is that coding obviously is not a magic bullet and we have to communicate it very very clearly to parents that it's not a magic bullet it's not like you know something will happen your kid learns to write this 32 activities or whatever and he or she will get picked up by some I mean, like he'll be like ahead of the crowd it's nothing like that but the way i see it is that i think if they you know these kids today are so inundated in technology especially with covid they have access to laptops right so why not equip them with this tool which first of all makes them think more logically more systematically and also becomes an extension of their mind right so just like we i mean i look at i in fact when this question makes me look back at what did i use computers for and i realized that you know when we were learning engineering of course i learned computers when i was in first year of engineering but later on when we learned let's say some subjects in fourth year we did simulations we solved problems in a different way because we have access to a computer right we could solve let's say uh, you know otherwise we wouldn't have solved those problems right so i think in the same way you know if you i think with practice and practice is important it's not a you know uh, not a uh, let's say a bargainable term here i think it can equip students with a view that computer is an extension of their mind and they'll solve problems creatively no matter what area they work in right so they could tomorrow become an actor they could become a writer they could become maybe a chef and they're like a million professions right obviously they can become a computer programmer but i think they will just you know uh, be more creative but many times this answer is a bit too poetic for people so you just have to tell them hey look you know they are going to do well in so and so exam there are competitions that they can look at and so on so you know uh, that's how it goes but this challenge is is actually real right so with this i think again i'll pause here for a moment before i I mean, these pieces of advice are for more for parents and kids, but still, I'll share them here. Right? Again, if there's any question, I'll be happy to take. You know, on the so the uh, the point about dropout, yes, kids being busy is playing a role, but we are also trying to adapt to that reality. Okay, so. There is no question. Maybe I'll just you know this is advice. Just, to, yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah, just a bit of information. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you are aware of it. Uh, there's also a Harvard CS50 course, uh, even for the undergraduates in Scratch. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I give that example. Scratch. I give that example to so many people, but you know many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, and it's a brilliant. It's uh, you know it's only teenagers or anybody who thinks that Scratch is. Uh, you know it spoils the com complex thinking and yeah. we don't even have to look at that uh, you know yeah. easy tools but you know advanced uh, uh, you know uh, you can create Ideas, adva right? yeah yeah real complexity with scratch that's True. possible True. my concerns are different i told you that i have concerns but those are different sure so we can talk those about more that. of transitionary things here yeah. Yeah. yeah fair enough yeah. Yeah. now i think the other part about scratch which i find amazing is the way it's been designed as a platform right i mean one's quite stable uh two i think the way you know the entire concept of cloning for example right and yeah. the way i mean they've abstracted out so many things right like you know if i tell my students an 8 year old that x equals to x plus 1 exactly i mean yeah. i think that will be like a pain right so they yeah. have the set and change so they it shows that we really thought through a lot of these things right which which is quite amazing i thought exactly yeah. mm -hmm. okay so you know uh, we can run through this fast i think the advice i give to people is that yes there are lots of platforms out there you will hear a lot of terminology you know we talk to many people you'll get some people will give you very contradictory advice as well but the point is you do not need to learn every platform or every language it's not at all needed nobody does that right you're just that's a road route to like you know getting tired though some people seem to have this rush you know when i talk to them idea is to focus on fundamentals and learn by doing i think this is very important enjoy this process right this process can be painful and i think one of the things that i make it clear from day one as somebody comes in we have a quiz in which to acquaint the course so i tell them okay what happens when you go to face problems in your projects will you throw your laptop out of the window or there are some options like that right so the point is i make it clear to them that they will run into problems and they will have to debug them but they have to learn to enjoy that and you know of course some people don't necessarily enjoy it that's okay and importantly they must learn to learn because you know like you said things will change right and again this we just talked spend more time with block coding please dispel this notion that block coding does not help uh, i think it's a great way to learn also again this goes back to the magic bullet you know uh, point that i think some people started harboring this perception that you know coding is something that has been sort of discovered now and if i do this that's it i don't have to learn anything else and i'm done right and 
uh, I mean, it's so wrong at so many levels, but that's how it is, right? So I keep telling them, look, the basic mathematics and science is actually very, very important because whatever we are discussing, be it robotics, be it, you know, uh, uh, let's say even coding is rooted in this. Now, related to this is this point about AI and ML. Now, the latest kid on the block with respect to this alphabet soup that we are living in is this AI ML. I mean, I've had students fifth year, uh, like fifth standard, sixth standard, their parents calling me, hey, you know, so-and-so's kid is learning AI ML. When are you going to teach that, right? In fact, I attended a workshop uh, just to understand what's going on, on AI ML being taught to like fifth, sixth standard year old, uh, fifth, six year olds. And that's uh, fifth, sixth standard students, right? Now, there's nothing wrong. I mean, there's nothing, no disdain about anything, but the point is that there is a certain amount of mathematical maturity that is required before you can really appreciate. I mean, we are looking at students who do not know what are quadratic equations. I mean, forget about it. many of them may not even know what are linear equations, right? So if, if you tell them what is logistic regression, I think it's a little disconnected there, right? So the point is build your capabilities in science and mathematics, and I think things will follow. Keep pr programming. It, like I said, it's going to become an extension of your mind, and you, you'll see that it becomes more and more interesting. So with that, I... I will end this. This is the message I give to all my students. This is taken from scratch, but you know I made this like without thinking much. But this has become sort of prophetic uh, and iconic for our program. Forever enjoy coding. And with that, I think I'll end my talk. I'll, I'll be happy to take any more questions, comments. And you know another request I have is that if you know someone or if you yourself think that you have the passion for this, uh, you know, we are looking to work with people who are like-minded. We are very conscious of quality, as you can imagine. We have not looked at, you know, uh, diluting that any way. If you think there's somebody that you know or you yourself may be interested in contributing any way, I'll be very happy to discuss this because we want to make this better uh, with everybody's inputs. Yeah. So with that, thank you so much for a very patient uh, audience. Thanks again to Arvind. And again, I can take any questions that may be. Thank you, Vineet, for that uh, interesting talk, very useful talk, and sharing all your insights and experiences, both in terms of uh, coming up with the curriculum as well as, uh, you know, interacting and, and understanding the perspective of students. And we wish you all the best of luck and best of luck for Ybyte. Any questions from others?